everybody welcome back to another video within the generative AI series and in this video we'll talk about how you can process a video using GPT-40 Vision API. So in the previous video we sort of leveraged the very same API provided it with one image and extracted context out of that image. So if you haven't seen the video I'm gonna hook it up into the cards now. Uh, you can go ahead and watch it before you continue with this video because it will help you gain some better context about the Vision API itself. So the good thing is that the Vision API sort of supports multiple images. So uh, consider a video like a collection of images called frames. So all these frames are stacked upon each other. So what if we sort of extract these frames out and provide it to the Vision API so that's the plan and that's how the GPT-40 model would extract the meaning or context out of it, summarize it for us and provide it to us. So that's the whole plan. Let's get into the code and try it out. So I have my standard import statements over here. The only difference is the CV2 library, which happens to be a, a video utility library that we're gonna use to extract the frames from our test videos. So I load up my .env file, extract my OpenAI key, initialize the OpenAI client. And here I'm initializing the CV2 library uh, to sort of load up our test footage. So I have two test videos over here. So let me go ahead and show you. These are like small comic videos. So the very first one is, all right. So, so there's a mother and an ice cream man. And, okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, no. Don't, don't. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna provide it to GPT-40. Let's see the second video. Is it like a... Oh, that's the same mother. All right, so there's a train. Hmm. Ah. Saves the day. No, it doesn't. That's it. Oh, <laughs> all right. So, so we're gonna use these two videos to sort of, uh, let's see how GPT-40 does in order to summarize these two videos. So right, extract frames from the video. All right, so I have base 64 frames, empty array. So I'm gonna use the very same video uh, object and we're gonna check if it's opened success frame we're reading the video over here if not success we're gonna break the loop so I think this on this is only allowed within a loop so here's the magic is happening where we're extracting the frames so and we're storing the frames here by just encoding it encoding each frame to a base 64 string perfect so then we release the video and we print out how many frames have we read perfect um, and the next step is obviously you guys are pretty much aware of this this is where we uh, write our prompt by the role user the content array says these are the frames from a video that I want to depict explain what is in the video in a summary paragraph all right, so this line might be a bit confusing for you. So let me go ahead and explain it. So this is like a map function, which takes in a Lambda function. So this here in Python happens to be an anonymous function. So the idea is that we have all of our frames over here and we want to map each frame within this. Ignore uh, this right now. Just follow me over here. So we want to use every entity within this object base 64 frames and we want to map all of these frames to this particular object so for that we are using 
the limit annotation. So this is like an anonymous function and each frame item would land in X. So hence we sort of initialize image with an X and we uh, use the resize attribute which a vision API uses to resize it to 768 pixels. Perfect. So this will be a pretty small frame but pretty small enough for the API to interpret this uh, frame. Now coming to this, so what we're doing right now, so obviously a video would comprise of a lot of frames. If we sort of use every frame, uh, it's really gonna take up a lot of space and it would be a compute intensive query even for the LLM. So we wanna make sure that we make its task easier by extracting some frames out of it. So what this here tells you like uh, select the frame with 30 intervals. So that would sort of squeeze in or minimize the number of frames we extract out of the video. So it's like if you're in the very first position, then the second frame would be in the 30th position, which we would use. And the third frame would be in the 60th position and 90th and so on. The next thing we do is we initialize a particular object, which just tells you what the model is and we sort of use the prompt array within the message and we tell uh, the limit of our max token over here, which happens to be 300. The last line, obviously we just extract all the uh, details from our result and print it to the screen. So this here is basically destructuring everything and providing it to the create method in a comma separated fashion. So. So yeah, this just looks a bit more organized. Perfect, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run it. All right. So 672 frames read. So now you see there are a lot of frames. So if we just stack 672 frame within the same API, um, we're gonna consume a lot of tokens. So. All right, so we got our description. In the animated video, a woman buys ice cream cone from the ice cream vendor uh, who is visibly excited and begins to eagerly lick the treat. The woman, let me zoom it up so that I can read it properly. So the woman pays the vendor while the child still holding his ice cream encounters dog that takes, takes interest in the cone and eventually defecates in front of the child. The shock child drops uh, the cone near the dog's faces, which the woman mistakenly picks up using the ice cream cone. Ew, 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 ew. She proceeds to hand it back to the confused child and a confused and frightened child, thinking the cone is still ice cream. The woman licks her finger innocently. The child reacts with horror, realizing the mishap, whereas the woman seems oblivious to the mix-up. Perfect, so that's exactly the depiction of the video and it's pretty amazing. So let's try the second video, which is not that straightforward. So you guys saw what happened. So like, uh, let's see how GPT-40 does here. All right, in the video, a comedic scene unfolds featuring a humorous character tied to the railroad track in a seemingly perilous situation. There Director's exaggerated expression convey a mix of fear and confusion as the train approaches rapidly. As tension builds, the train gets closer, a figure emerges from the nearby building, frantically reacting to the situation. This figure transforms into superhero and rushes to save the tight director, but inadvertently runs past the impeding danger, uh, landing in the nearby party store. So that wasn't correct. It, he just explodes, right? So uh, so does the women tied to the track. But okay, the sequence uh, accentuated with cartoonish animation and humorous edits aims to deliver a comedic twist on a typical superhero rescue trope. Oh, well, that's, that's correct. Ultimately providing a lighthearted and entertaining conclusion. The uh, visual and textual cues, uh, like please wait for the end and laughing emojis so if you saw the video it it just says uh, 
so it had like uh, please wait for the end and laughing emojis at the bottom so that's correct so it depicted it properly aim to keep the audience engaged and amused until the punchline is revealed perfect so not bad huh uh, i mean uh, this is great so uh, so this is how you can use a gpt40 vision api for videos pretty powerful and pretty quick so the responses and the latency is amazing so i'm loving the new gpt40 model and uh, uh, do drop your comments within the comment section and if you have any questions uh, they're most welcome and yeah that's it for this video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one